The brutal uh, act of violence is clearly a gross display of what ISIS is capable of, what they're motivated about, and what they are really all about. And I think this act of mass murder amounts to a religious war. Now, we all have our own interpretations at this point. This continues to go on. At this point, these people were targeted, as I see it, and murdered because of their faith. MSNBC host Ed Schultz saying we're in a religious war with ISIS. As that uh, offered to us as a pretext, let's now bring in our panel. Josh Orden, former aide to Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who Skypes in from Madison, Wisconsin, and Steve Dace, who's joining us via Skype from Des Moines, Iowa. Steve is the author of the book, Rules for Patriots, How Conservatives Can Win Again. So Josh, you got Ed Schultz, who is, uh, speaks very loudly about, um, about partisan issues. And he said it's, um, it's a religious war. Meantime, the White House issues a statement about the, uh, the beheading of 21 Coptic Christians, referring to them as Egyptian citizens. Will this White House ever join the terms Islamic and terrorism together? Well, I think there's no doubt that it's terrorism. I, look, my friend uh, Ed Schultz uh, has a lot of, usually has a lot of interesting points, but I, I wouldn't necessarily call him a, a religious scholar. Um, I think that the White House has smartly um, avoided some of the more bombastic terms here, and I think that I, I'm a little actually sort of curious why conservatives have been so angry at the White House for not using um, the more bombastic um, sort of religious terminology. I think that um, it's not something that's necessarily productive here. I don't think Obama saying magic words is going to summon, you know, the Power Rangers or something like that. I, I think that this is about um, a deliberate strategy. This isn't about um, some interesting lexicon. Uh, what about that, Steve? Is it mere bombast to call it Islamic terror? I think what um, Americans, regardless of political persuasion, as I stand today in solidarity, J.D., with Ed Schultz, I think what Americans uh, want to see is that we have the moral clarity from our leaders to understand who our enemy is, what is motivating them, uh, because that is an indicator that we are willing to do, therefore, what it will take to defeat them. And if you want to look for moral clarity on this issue, I would look no further than a Muslim, uh, the leader of Egypt, I think has provided a, a lot of moral clarity in the last few weeks. Uh, a leader, by the way, that this president didn't want to support. He wanted to support the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt instead. Or another Muslim, like the King of Jordan, for example, uh, who took up arms, in, literally, in defense of his own people uh, for what uh, the Islamic State uh, did to him uh, and, and his countrymen and his, uh, his subjects there in the, in the Kingdom of Jordan. So I think those are examples of how intelligent people can draw distinctions while at the same time calling evil what it is. Frankly, it is becoming sophomoric and laughable uh, to continue these euphemisms. And, and when you have Ed Schultz now abandoning ship because we've, we've just lost uh, you know, all moral clarity that not even he can stand on MSNBC and defend, I think that's a pretty good indication that the reach has exceeded the politically correct grasp of this you know, White I, House. I guess I, guess I, would never, I, would, I guess I would never use Ed Schultz as, a, as, a, as an indication of any necessarily moral <laughs> I'll make a note guidepost. of that. Hey, conservatives, make a note of what you just heard. Ed Schultz is not to be taken seriously from the man from Progressives United. We now have well, it on the record, so the well, rest of us can stop watching now. Yes, that's yes, that's very sophomore as well. But I'm what I'm saying is that Ed Schultz is not going to be my weather vane uh, when it comes to sort of religious terminology. I, I guess what I'm saying is that I think that a, a lot of this, frankly, cynically is about attacking the president. I think that Congress hasn't been willing to play ball when it comes to fighting ISIS. I think that what, what you're, you're seeing here is an attack on the commander in chief. And I think that conservatives during the Bush administration would not stop talking about how Democrats refused to work with President Bush and how they were undermining the, the commander in chief with, uh, with fr frivolous criticism. And I think when the shoe is on the other foot, Republicans have a short-term memory. They're, they're only willing to criticize. Hey, I was in the Congress of the United States when George W. Bush was right. I stood with him. When he was wrong, I stood against him. And speaking of sophomoric statements, earlier in this segment, Josh, you compared this whole construct to, construct to bringing in the Power Rangers. Now, something as serious as... Uh, religious persecution and people losing their lives. Sure, you want to clarify that remark? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This isn't about, uh, of course, this is a very serious uh, incident. I think that the rise of, of these sort of hateful incidents, and, and you see the rise in, in anti-Semitism especially, is deeply concerning. But what, I guess what I'm saying is Republicans seem to be laying so much on specific terminology, as if, the, if, if Obama were to simply use their preferred phrasing, somehow this, his entire strategy Well, I tell you what, when, when, we come back, when we come back, we'll take a look at the language you think is so circumspect, talk more about it, and get to other topics. Our political panel continues here on America's Forum. Welcome back to America's Forum. Uh, Josh Orton on the left, I just want to make sure the language is out there. This is, this is deemed circumspect by Josh. The United States condemns the despicable and cowardly murder of 21 Egyptian citizens in Libya by ISIL-affiliated terrorists. Let's welcome back Josh Orton on the left, Steve Dace on the right. Josh, let me try to point this out to you. And I'll use it in Obama-centric terms. On two occasions, January 20th of years separated in space by four years' time, the president's given a speech, but that speech has come following him taking the oath of office in an inaugural ceremony. So the important thing is the president taking the oath of office, not the speech. To simply say these are Egyptian citizens and fail to say they were uh, Coptic Christians beheaded by ISIS, strips the event of its, its intended brutality. Can you see the distinction now, apart from hyperbole? Uh, I, I actually think that there's, 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 two, there's two questions here. Um, the first is whether we think that President Obama is, acknowledges the full gravity of the situation and the, the, the brutality and, and um, the almost carnal um, attacks of, of, of these groups? And I think the answer is yes. The second question is, why is he choosing not to use the language that conservative talk show hosts and um, members of the House of Representatives are demanding that he uses? And I think that that question rests on whether or not you think the president, uh, whether, what your answer is to the first question. My answer to the first question is yes, of course he understands the gravity of the situation. It is not because he refute, he's digging his head in the sand. This is a question of whether or not he wants to engage in a, a, a larger thing that he thinks could potentially be a distraction from the actual tactics and the strategy. And I think that what you've seen is fairly convincing arguments that um, it's not actually going to be productive to engage in the much larger um, abstract um, vernacular of a religious war because this is a very specific thing and I think Obama has as very smartly, um, as President Bush did during um, during his administration, in pointing out that these attacks do not represent the the, the Muslim religion uh, writ large. Well, I'll tell you a problem Bush had. If you want to hear a problem, Josh, calling it the war on terror. That's a tactic, not an enemy. But let me give it to Steve Dace. We got a couple of minutes left, Steve. In debate, you accurately define the terms and the participants. These guys just won't, don't want to accurately define the terms. Now, these guys called the Islamic State, they're not driven by an anti-colonial fervor. They're not driven by land for oil. They are not driven by scarce resources. We're in a collapsing economy like Putin, so he's invading Ukraine. They are driven by their religion. To, to claim anything otherwise is, is frankly insanity. Again, and yes, well, again, and and I, yes I do question exactly the moral the clarity of, of this president. president when avoid. he sent last year his Secretary of State on a plane to hand Hamas a $47 million check of taxpayer dollars just as they're lobbying missiles at Israel. When, he, when back in 2013, we had to get rid of Assad. We had to go fight next to al-Qaeda to get rid of Assad. And now we're arming and, and, and informing Assad to help us with Islamic wait, so State. What's, wait, what's we, your we point, We sided with the, with the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Well, what's your point? We sided with the Muslim Brotherhood in Libya. Six months ago, we called Yemen our great uh, foreign policy success story. So, so the, we evacuated the, 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 our, our, our embassy there well, last so week. What's, this is total and complete moral confusion and the language Ridiculous. that we are seeing which That's also absurd. lacks clarity jd That's is absurd. simply just fruit more bitter fruit That's from the same absurd. tree of this failed tell problem. you what tell you what guys 20 seconds each josh go ahead and respond I think it's unfortunate the conservatives have been unwilling to work with the president and instead continue to attack him on on his on his lack of using uh, these grandiose terms that seem inappropriate steve dace 20 seconds to you 
I'm not concerned about terminology. I'm concerned about handing Hamas seem, checks. Seem, I'm concerned about arming. Concerned I'm concerned about uh, aiding and abetting the Muslim Brotherhood. I'm more concerned about things like that. You know, the larger abstract questions here, J.D. Well, we can debate the intent of the Islamic State, but it does appear that there is a state of confusion rather than clarity when it comes to the execution of our foreign policy and understanding what's at stake. Josh Orton, as always, we do appreciate your point of view. Steve Dace, we thank you again. Steve Dace has a new book out, Rules for Patriots, How Conservatives Can Win Again. We've had some heavy duty topics. When we come back, uh, we'll try to take a breather and put a smile on your face with Comedy Corner.